Jane Cook Wright, a pioneer in clinical cancer chemotherapy, was born on November 30, 1919, in New York. She is the daughter of Corinne Cook and Lewis Wright. Her father was one of the first African-American graduates of Harvard Medical School, and he established the Cancer Research Center at Harlem Hospital. Mrs. Cook Wright lived in New York until 1938, when she enrolled in Smith College. Upon graduation, she was one of two graduates in her class accepted to medical school. In 1945, she graduated from New York Medical College and married David Ju Jones, Jr. In 1948, Jane and David had the first of their two daughters. In 1952, at the age of 33, Jane Cook Wright was appointed head of the Cancer Research Foundation. In 1955, she became associate professor of surgical research at NYU Medical Center. In 1964, she was appointed to Lyndon B. Johnson's Commission on Heart Disease, Cancer, and Stroke. After 12 years of research at NYU Medical Center on experimental drug treatment for cancer, in 1967, Jane was the highest ranking African American woman in a U.S. medical institution. In 1971, she became the first woman to be elected president of the New York Cancer Society. Mrs. Cook Wright retired in 1987, but she still serves on many cancer research societies. She was among the first researchers to test chemotherapy drugs on humans and the only African American woman to reach the highest point in The Conquer Cancer Foundation of the American Society of Clinical Oncology is honored to pay tribute to one of ASCO's founders, Dr. Jane Cook Wright by naming a Young Investigator Award in her honor for her years of dedication to the field of oncology and passion for fighting cancer. There were seven original founders of ASCO in 1964, people who came together and said we should start exchanging some ideas about this treatment of cancer. And of the seven original founders, uh, one was Dr. Jane Wright, an African-American woman. So you cannot imagine how unusual being a woman physician in 1964, being a minority physician in 1964, and then being both a woman and a minority in 1964, and to be at the very top of this young and emerging field. As an African-American woman just beginning her career as a physician in the 1940s, Dr. Wright was not only a pioneer in the field of cancer research and treatment, but also a trailblazer opening minds and opening doors for those who would follow after her. She never looked at things as obstacles. She looked at them as challenges. And I think that she was a very ambitious person, and I think she never let anything stand in the way of her doing what she wanted to do. Dr. Wright's father and grandfather were both physicians. Her father, one of the first African-American graduates of Harvard Medical School, and the first African-American surgeon at a municipal hospital in New York. Dr. Wright worked alongside her father at Harlem Hospital, where they worked together on anti-cancer chemicals, later to be known as chemotherapy. She comes from a long line of people who had a strong interest in medicine and in the area of cancer research as well. Her father was very active in doing clinical trials on some of the earliest um, anti-cancer drugs that were used, and she developed a strong interest in this. And in 67, she was appointed the associate uh, dean of New York Medical College, where she graduated from, and she was the first African-American female to reach this rank um, in the country. Dr. Robert Madden worked with Dr. Wright at New York Medical College and recalls her tenacity and her contributions. She recognized the value of placing patients on clinical trials. and and it was not exactly accepted by that, the medical public. M many of the doctors would not put their patients on clinical trials because they figured, well, this is an end of the end of life exercise. And she didn't look at it that way. She looked at it as an opportunity to open the gates to new possibilities in treatment of cancer. And th that way she's a trailblazer. During her career, Dr. Wright analyzed a wide range of anti-cancer agents, explored the relationship between patient and tissue culture response, and developed new techniques for administering cancer chemotherapy. She never approached a patient with saying, I can only help you a little bit. She said, together, 
we're going to battle this. She is, is not only emblematic of the kind of a caring physician who you'd want to have or who I'd want to have as my doctor, but also as the role model and mentor of young physicians who would receive their training from her. Although she retired in 1987, she still shows the same unwavering dedication to the field and to ASCO and marvels at the organization it has become. I think that every recipient of the Jane Wright Young Investigator Award uh, needs to have uh, an opportunity to really review her life uh, and therefore appreciate her legacy. They are following in her um, phenomenal footsteps, you know, with, with tenderness towards patient care, with, with rigor towards scientific investigation, with uh, focus that is always external and always on the patient.